Amen. Thank you, Amanda. That was wonderful. Let's take our Bibles and turn, if we could, to the book of Matthew, the fifth chapter, Matthew chapter 5. And we are continuing our study on It's a Wonderful Life. We're looking at the Beatitudes. We've begun this sermon series looking at blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Looking at what the Bible has to say about humility, of course, Jesus, our greatest example in all of these. We looked at last time, uh, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Those that mourn over circumstances in their life and those that mourn uh, because of sin or the sin in their life. And we're looking at this morning, blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 1. As we read it together, we'll read the entire uh, passage of Scripture here uh, right to verse number 12. The Bible says in verse number 1, And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men do revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Let's pray together. Father, I pray you would help us. As we look at this portion of Scripture this morning, I pray your word would speak to our hearts. I pray your word would convict us. I pray that we would be more like the Lord Jesus because of it. I pray if there's an individual who does not know you as Lord and Savior, I pray that today would be the day of salvation, that they would trust you as their Lord and Savior. I pray, Father, you would hide me behind the cross, give me the words to say. I pray you'd be glorified in my efforts this morning. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, the title of this series is It's a Wonderful Life. And we're looking at the life that is submitted or surrendered to the Holy Spirit in their life. We find the Beatitudes are both prophetic and also practical. Uh, Prophetic from the point that the Lord is talking about the reign of the the new earth upon uh, the reign of the Lord. But also it's talking about the reign of Jesus Christ and the heart of his people. We notice that our world today worships power and notoriety. Bookstores are filled with quick guides to success. Our society tends to reject any evidence of weakness from losing sports teams to, you know, feeble people or elderly in poor health. In fact, many in our society consider even Christians as being weak because they use religion as a crutch. However, the Bible teaches us that God blesses uh, the life of the individual who is meek. And the Bible gives us a great truth about meekness. Now, let's understand something about meekness this morning. Meekness is not weakness. Meekness is not weakness. Meekness is power under control. Power under control. And Jesus Christ is our greatest example. I want you to turn with me to Philippians chapter 2. Would you turn there, Philippians chapter 2? And I want us to notice what the Bible has to say in this passage of Scripture. Philippians chapter 2. And notice what the Word of God says in verse number 5. The second chapter of the book of Philippians and verse number 5. The Bible says, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and he became obedient unto death, even the death 
of the cross. The Bible tells us in this passage of scripture that Jesus Christ made himself of no reputation. The only individual who ever walked the face of this earth that ever deserved a reputation, the Bible says that Jesus Christ made himself of no reputation, power under control. The Greek word for meekness was often used to describe a farmer breaking in a colt. We find the very thought of, of a horse that was powerful but yet under control. I love what A.W. Tozer had to say about this. He says, the meek man is not a, a human mouse afflicted with a sense of his own humility. Rather, he may be in his moral life as bold as a lion and as strong as Samson, but he has stopped being fooled about himself. He has accepted God's estimate of his own life. He now knows he is weak and helpless as God declared him to be. But ironically, he knows at the same time that he is in the sight of God more important than the angels. In himself, nothing. In God, everything. This is his motto. In himself, nothing. But in God, everything. This is the motto of a man who is meek. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse number 3, would you turn there with me? Romans chapter 12 and verse number 3. And notice what the word of God has to say in this wonderful book of the Bible, the book of Romans in the 12th chapter and the third verse. The apostle, the apostle Paul is speaking and he gives us a wonderful truth about our Christian life, about our view of ourselves. In verse number 3, the Bible says, For I say through the grace given unto me and to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. You see, in ourself we are nothing, but in God we are everything. A sober view of our Christian life, in, in ourselves nothing, in God everything. Someone said the beatitude of meekness typifies the result of kneeling in total submission to God's will. It comes from the indwelling Holy Spirit and from allowing Him to produce Christ-like character in us. Meekness says, not my will, but thine be done. And so as we think about this passage of Scripture in Matthew chapter 5, as we think about a wonderful life and the blessed life of being a meek individual, I want us to notice in the Word of God examples of meekness. Examples of meekness. And I want us to notice, first of all, uh, the life of Abraham. Would you turn to the Old Testament, to the book of Genesis, the first book of the Bible, Genesis chapter 13. And I want us to notice the life of Abraham as we think of examples of meekness in Abraham's life. Genesis chapter 13 and verse number 7 together. The Bible says, verse number 7, And there was strife between the herdsmen of Abra uh, Abram's cattle and the herdsmen of Lot's cattle, and the Canaanite and the Pezzarite dwelleth then in the land. And Abram said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdsmen and, th and thy herdsmen. For we be brethren, verse 9, Is not the whole land before us separate Thyself, I pray thee, from me, and if thou wilt take the, uh, the left hand, and I will go to the right. If thou shalt depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. Now notice the strife that we find in this passage of Scripture between uh, Lot's herdsmen and Abraham's uh, herdsmen in this particular ta uh, text. We also understand that Abraham had the power to take all of the land. But we notice in this passage of Scripture that he offered a portion to Lot. We find power under control. The Word of God tells us in Romans chapter 12 and verse number 10, be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love in honor preferring one another, putting another individual before your own needs, before your own wants. 
And we find it in the life of Abraham. Though Abraham had power to take all of the land, we find in this passage of Scripture that he offers a portion of this land to Lot. We find that he was surrendered to God, and as he was surrendered to God, he also surrendered his life to others. We find meekness. We find the power uh, that he had, yet it was under control. You know, we just have to understand uh, this morning that just because we can doesn't mean we should. And just because we have opportunity to do so doesn't mean that that opportunity we should take it. And here we find this, the meekness of Abraham as he gives a portion of the land uh, to Lot. I want us to think also in Genesis chapter 38 of a man named Joseph. Now in Genesis chapter 38 and Genesis chapter 39, we are introduced to Joseph. He's sold into slavery. He's lied about by his master's wife. And, uh, you know, as you look at this passage of Scripture, he didn't start a writing uh, campaign, a, a bitter writing campaign or a fight back organization. He, he's sitting in prison. We don't know how long that Joseph is sitting in prison, but he's waiting on the Lord. He's waiting on God. And one day he's placed in authority. Now, Joseph knew that God was in control of his circumstance. And God places Joseph into authority. His brothers come for help. You know the story. And although Joseph had power, he could have sought revenge. He did not. He did not. Meekness reveals itself when we are right and have the power to hurt someone who is wrong. And we find the meekness of Joseph as his brothers come, and yet he did not seek for revenge, but he helps them along their way, and he loves them. And we find the forgiveness of Joseph in this passage of Scripture. We're looking at examples of meekness, and we can learn from these examples. Think about David. In 1 Samuel chapter 24, David could have taken Saul's life. But instead, the Bible says he only cut a portion of his garment, power under control, and even though he took a piece of his garment, he still regretted uh, that decision because he had touched the Lord's anointed. You know, the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 29, would you turn there, as we think of David's life, we think of power under control. I want us to think about what the Bible says, Isaiah chapter 29 In verse number 19, let's look at this verse together. Isaiah chapter 29 and verse number 19. The word of God says this, the meek. And we're looking at the meek. We're looking at examples of meekness. The meek also shall increase their joy in the Lord. And the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. It really gives us a great truth about a meek individual. You know, there's lots of people who are running around seeking for revenge, bitterness in their heart, and all they're doing is is looking for an opportunity that they can get this person back or, or, or tell that person a piece of their mind. And yet they are so unhappy people. But we find the meekness in an individual's life, we find an individual who is meek. The Bible says their, their, their joy shall increase because they are looking to the Lord. They are looking to God. They are trusting in the Lord. They are trusting in God for their life. And so we find examples of meekness. But I want us also to see this morning the examination for meekness. We're going to have a test this morning. and We're going to see if we're meek people. I want us to turn back to Psalm 37. It was our scripture reading this morning. But I want us to turn back there. I want to read it one more time as we move into this examination for meekness, some questions about meekness in our own life as we examine our own hearts and our own life. In Psalm 37, verse number 1, the Bible gives us a blueprint for trusting the Lord or or following the Lord in our life. And many times we fret and, and, and we are overcome by the cares of this world. And yet the Bible gives us really a a remedy in trusting the Lord and looking to the Lord. In verse 1, the Bible simply says, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. 
Trust in the Lord and do good. So shall thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. It speaks of the provision of God. As you trust the Lord, God takes care of our needs. Delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass and he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil, for evildoers shall be cut off, and those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou, uh, thou shalt diligently consider uh, this place, and it shall not be. The meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The meek, the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Let me give you some questions as we examine our life. Are we a meek people? First of all, do we become angry or fretful easily? Do we become angry or do we become fretful easily? When circumstances change quickly in our life, is the first thing we do is trust in the Lord or is the first thing we do is worry and fret or become angry? The Bible says in verse 3 in this wonderful psalm, trust in the Lord and do good. Trust in the Lord. So shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Trust in the Lord, and God will provide. Trust in the Lord. He is in control. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Look at these expressions. Trust in the Lord. Trust also in the Lord. Delight thyself also in the Lord. Commit thy way unto the Lord. You see, the meek man focuses on Jesus Christ. The meek man focuses his attention on Christ. And so the question is, do I become angry or do I fret easily? Let me ask you the second question this morning. Do I accept God's word easily? I want you to turn to James chapter 1. James chapter 1 in your Bible. James chapter 1. Do I accept God's word easily? We find in James chapter 1, it's talking about receiving the word of God in our life. The Bible says in James chapter 1, verse number 21, the Bible says, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive, now here it is, Receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. The word of God teaches us and proclaims to us Jesus Christ, the Savior, Savior of the world. It is him in whom we have eternal life. And the Bible says that as we look at the Bible, we are not to look at it as just another book, but it is a living book, and we are to easily accept the word of God in our life. We are to accept it as God's word, God's revelation. And the Bible says we are to accept it with meekness, with meekness. And so the question is, do I accept God's word easily? Heard the story of a little boy who was sitting in junior church and he was told to sit down uh, one Sunday morning and the teacher told him, you know, Johnny, have a seat. And uh, that little boy looked at the teacher and said, I'm sitting on the outside, but I'm standing in the inside. And so many Christians have that attitude toward the things of God. It is the very attitude of rebellion. And yet the word of God speaks to our heart and we have the attitude, I won't do that or I won't be a part of that or I'm not going to do that in my life. And yet the Bible says that we are to accept the word of God. We are to accept the word of God with meekness, power, under control. Oh yes, you have a free will and you can do what you want. But as we look at the word of God, we are to submit to the word of God and say, not my will, but thine be done. And we are to submit to the word of God. And so we have this question, do we receive the word of God? Let me give you a second question. Do I become, uh, not only do I accept God's word easily, 
Do I become angry or fretful easily? But let me ask you this question. Do we seek unity? Do we seek unity? Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 1. The apostle Paul penned, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long-suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of of peace. We find, do we seek unity? The Bible says that we are to love each other and forbear each other in love, and we are to endeavor for that unity, and we must do it in lowliness, that's humility, and we must do it also in meekness. How is our attitude towards someone who disagrees with us? How is our attitude towards someone who disagrees with us? 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 24. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach and patient. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you the reason of the hope that is in you with meekness, and with fear, with meekness, and with fear. And so there's examples of meekness. There's this test, there's this examination. Are we a meek people? But I want us to notice lastly in this passage of Scripture, the exercise of meekness. Would you turn to Galatians chapter 5 in your Bibles? Galatians chapter 5. Now as we think of the Beatitudes, uh, prophetically speaking of the new earth, the reign of the Lord, the millennial reign of the Lord, but also practically it's us submitting to the Lord Jesus Christ in our life. It is us bearing the fruit of the Spirit of God as we submit to him, not my will but thine be done. And we find in Galatians chapter 5 the fruit of the Spirit. Now fruit is cultivated, not manufactured. And we find in this passage of Scripture the fruit of the Spirit. This is the revelation of the control of the Spirit of God in an individual's life. The Bible says in verse 22 of the fifth chapter, but the fruit of the Spirit is, and it gives us a list here. The Bible says the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. You see, meekness is cultivated through difficult experiences. Difficulties in our life will either cultivate a spirit of of meekness or difficulties in our life will cultivate a spirit of rebellion. And we find that we are to submit to the word of God. We are to submit to the spirit of God. In fact, there's no remedy. The apostle Paul writing to the church of Rome declares to them that they are to put on these things. The Bible says, put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies and kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness and long suffering. So we are to put these things on in our life. As we experience meekness, we inherit the earth. Now, prophetically, God will reign in the millennial uh, kingdom one day. There's no doubt about it. We're looking forward to that day. But practically, as we submit to the Spirit of God, as we, as we submit to the work of the Spirit of God in our life, and as we humble ourselves to the Lord, as we put on these things, the Spirit of God works in our heart and in our life, and we notice the reign of Jesus Christ in our life today. The Bible says in Psalm 37, trust in the Lord and do good. And and so shall thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. Now what's interesting, the Bible says that the meek shall inherit the earth. Now usually an inheritance is given when an individual dies. You receive an inheritance. And yet in this passage of scripture, the inheritance is given when we die to ourselves. And when the Spirit of God is reigning in in our heart, you see, meekness seeks nothing for self and receives all things from God. And we have wonderful examples in the Word of God like Joseph and like David and like Abraham. 
the Bible says, blessed, happy are the meek. And as we look at a, a life that is controlled by the Spirit of God, you can either be cultivating in your life a spirit of rebellion and the spirit of, uh, of jealousy or envy or a spirit uh, of, of, of anger and wrath, or you can be cultivating in your life a spirit of meekness, power under control, trusting the Lord, fretting not about tomorrow, trusting God from day to day. You know, once again, the greatest example of meekness uh, is the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to turn as we close, 1 Peter chapter 2. Would you turn there? 1 Peter chapter 2. And I want us to notice the meekness of the Lord in second, 1 Peter, excuse me, 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 23. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 23. The Bible says who, uh, speaking of Jesus, who when he was uh, when he was riled, uh, reviled, uh, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not. Uh, verse number 23, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 7, the Bible says that he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as the lamb to the slaughter and as the sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. Power under control. Submission to his father. Obedience to the death of the cross. He sought his, not his own gain. The Bible says though he was rich, he became poor for your sakes. He sought not his own gain, but the gain of others. It's a true, wonderful life when we stop looking to ourselves for revenge or anger or worry and we look to God. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth as the spirit of God is in control and reigning in our life and as we, tr as we show in our life true meekness that my friend is a wonderful Christian life.